Welcome. I'm Kinetic Symphony. I hunt down and report on weird and true mysterious stories, from glitches to the paranormal. Did you know you can support the channel by joining? Something to think about. Now onto the stories. Case file number 910, written by Joshua. Is this the instruction set for the universe? This happened to me when I was 22 years old. I'm 26 now. I was in my backyard doing some stuff, when a young person appeared from afar, near my yard, not knowing where he came from. He started walking closer to me. He's in all silk and white, doesn't even wear any flip-flops or shoes. As he gets closer and closer and finally stands in front of me face to face, I realize that this young man was me when I was 19 years old, yet he doesn't look stressed and creepy like I was at 19. I spoke to him and said, you look so familiar to me. In fact, you look just like me, just way younger. Then he said, I was the behalf of you. I said, behalf? What do you mean by behalf? His response, it's like we are twins. I'm the celestial and you are my terrestrial. Soon we will be as one perfect person. Then I said to myself in my own thoughts, hell, is this a joke? Then he spoke up again and said, No, I'm not joking. I was literally you. As of now, I can't eat like you do, but unlike you, I can't die. How did this young man know my thoughts? Very confused, I said back, I don't know you, so just please leave now. Your words are a bit odd, so please just leave. The chilling response, You can't accept this fact for now, but soon, when you meet the Creator, you will be open to this and know I was right. Then he just vanished in front of me. I started to think that the creator he spoke of and celestial and terrestrial, all of these words that I can't get out of my mind. I searched about this for many days and it was a link on some Bible website. There was just something there. It stated that God created people to be good and others to be evil and he also created people for corruption and incorruption. I don't know, Mr. Kinetic Symphony, but maybe we are just NPCs for the so-called God as a creator, on his own story as a simulation. And this Bible thing is the manual and settings or instruction set. Case notes are file 910. Is this the instruction set for the universe? That is a fascinating way to put it to state it as the manual for the universe, thing that's always in the glove compartment of any car. Not many people read it, right? But they probably should. Hmm. It's an interesting thing to think about, God, the creator. If you come at it in the sense that we live in a simulation, it makes it hard to piece together. But who knows? I mean, maybe it is God that's like, um, spoilers now. In Supernatural, there's Chuck, where I think if God exists, it would probably be akin to something like that, a sentient being that has all this knowledge and power, if you're alone and all you can do is create other things that you can predict, well you can't really get much out of that. You'd want to be able to create something that has its own spark, that has free will. It's like being able to create a bunch of books or movies but always knowing exactly what's going to happen. If you create it yourself, it's not as engaging or fun because there's no mystery. And I would imagine most people here love mystery. It's that nature of it where if you love mystery, no matter how much power you have, I think it's universal. I think if aliens exist too, they love a good mystery. Who doesn't? What doesn't? I guess is a better question. So yeah, I think if God exists, he would be probably bored and trying to create stories for himself. That's the best part of life. And I could see within the story that there would be an instruction set, something given to make sense of the world, for the characters in it to partake in, have a guide. Hmm. It's a neat idea. Now I don't know if that's actually the Bible, maybe it's more of a creation of man. Maybe it's intuitive, innate in all of us. I think we have a proper sense of right and wrong baked into us. Even people who are evil, I think they still know right from wrong, they just choose to act against right. Hmm. Case file number 911, written by Katie, The Ghost of Time. When I was a child, I had no idea that my dad had been adopted. My grandma didn't want us to know. I'm one of five children. When I was 14, my grandma got really sick really quickly and my parents decided she was too sick for me to visit her. I was very upset about this and was devastated when she passed away. 
The funeral took place, and my granddad told me that he and my grandma had adopted both my dad and his sister. This was news, but didn't bother me as my grandparents were always there for me. A couple months passed and life moved on. I live in a market town in central England, which my grandparents visited numerous times. I was walking up a hill in the town center when everything suddenly went totally quiet and everything slowed down. I then saw a group of people walking past. The only one I could focus on was my grandma. She waved and smiled at me and then everything was suddenly back to normal. I was 14 and led a very sheltered life and wasn't taking any medication. I told my parents when I got home and they didn't say they didn't believe me but didn't really make much comment. For years I've thought about ghosts because I didn't get to say goodbye, but now I'm wondering if time itself glitched. Case notes are file 911. The Ghost of Time. Right, so it could be a ghost, the fragmented essence of her soul lingering behind. Though as you describe it, it sounds more like a time slip and the fact that she recognized you is fascinating. Somehow you were incorporated within this timeline. Or maybe she was just very friendly back then. Makes me wonder if the soul can time travel more easily than the physical body. Maybe it was simply your soul that was inhabiting the person back then, and your grandma knew that person, so of course interacted politely with them. That would make sense. And the soul does seem to be able to navigate through universes and time and space much easier than the physical body. The physical body has to deal with the Lorentz transformation and time dilation and the Higgs boson field and, you know, limiting our movement through space-time, all that kind of physical stuff. The soul, however, seems uninhibited. Even if we don't live in a buffered universe, the past is the past, it's already been written. So going back to it, resuming from replay from the past moment, sure, why not? It shouldn't affect anything in the future, it's a different timeline or just a saved uh, game state, sort of. But going back and experiencing it, sure. The information's there, as long as it's saved. Case file number 912, written by Bonita248. The Christmas Gift Jitters. So, for a few years now, I've been experiencing quite a few glitches. However, what happened the other night takes the cake. I don't really know if this is paranormal or a glitch, but here's the story. Christmas was Sunday, and yes, very exhausting. With four little ones at the house, I'm sure you can imagine. Well, although I don't have much money, I made sure I put a ton of thought into what I would be gifting each child. So, the two youngest are little girls, age 6 and 8. They both are still into toys, but are kinda iffy about dolls because I watch a lot of creepy movies such as Annabelle, Chucky, and so on. I decided instead, for one of their gifts to be a noise-making stuffed puppet. The oldest daughter, Rena, has a flamingo that makes a chirping bird sound. The youngest one, Aya, has a puppy that barks. Simple enough and very cute. Well, the other night, it was me and Aya in the kitchen. Aya had Rina's flamingo. Listen, mommy, this bird is copying me, says Aya. Copying me, says the flamingo. What? I said. What? says the bird. And it went on in such a way, repeating us, until Aya finally decided to turn the damn thing off and throw it away. So I was telling her that I didn't know that the flamingo had that feature. She said she didn't either but it was creepy and she didn't want to play with it any longer. I called my daughter Rena so that I could ask her if she knew that her toy had this cool feature but she was asleep. The next day I was getting ready for work and saw the flamingo. Rena and my son were awake. While I had it on my mind I then asked Rena about the toy and she said she didn't know either. However, when I turned it on to demonstrate to them what it was doing, it didn't do it. It just made a chirping sound. Weird. So there's a button with a music symbol on it that you have to push in order to get it to sing. I pressed that button over and over and only chirping came out. I shook the toy, talked to it, yelled at it, threatened it, examined it for any other buttons to which there weren't any, and it still only chirped. So now I'm feeling crazy. I woke up Aya to get her to act as a witness, proof that it actually was repeating to us the night before and she confirmed it. I asked her what she did to make it do that, she said nothing. She just started talking to it and then talked back. Well, I had to go to work, so I left, but prior to punching in I looked up the toy on the site that I bought it from and read the features. To my utter shock and horror, it only read that the bird chirps. I googled it also and nothing was mentioned about it talking let alone copying voices. 
I was totally creeped out and I'm trying to figure out a way to throw the toy in the garbage without Rena noticing. Case notes for file 912. The Christmas Gift Jitters. Oh my god, that movie, The um, Child's Play, I think it was. That was the first horror movie I saw, maybe I was nine. My mom didn't want me to watch it, my but my dad let me, so, you know, thanks dad. <laughs> That's okay. But damn, it terrorized me. That's uh, one hell of a movie to watch as a young kid. <laughs> it does bring up a question, can a soul inhabit inanimate object? I don't think so. I think a soul, uh, an echo, a fragment left behind, spirit, whatever you want to call it, the part that's not physical of us, that can still control physical matter, well that's the thing, it can move objects and make things shake and disrupt the EM fields and electronics, but I don't think it can like enter an object and control it in the sense of like a hu it could a human being for one thing or another. There's no brain to control, there's no nervous system to control, so it, if it can take possession of an object, it's basically the same as us just lifting an object around. It's not really controlling it. I don't think it would be able to manipulate like the vocal cords or however sound is produced in a doll. So really I don't know what would cause this. This is uh, freaky, honestly. And yeah, burn it with fire or toss it away. And if it comes back, just burn it again. Bury it deep in cement. <laughs> and you've reached the end of my notes. Another cool video, I think. If you like it, like it. Subscribe, hit the bell icon, get all my notifications. More videos to come. Onward to infinity and beyond with the Platypus.